So it's kind of sunny outside and very hot, but we are on our way to see Wonder Woman. Yeah, and I got a case of the con crud uh, after Phoenix Conicon, Conicon, Comic Con. Yeah, I feel really bad, but not even the sickness will keep me from seeing Wonder Woman. Yeah, let's go. All right, so Wonder Woman is my most anticipated movie of this year, and so I'm super excited to watch it. There's been so many good reviews, and it just hypes me even more. And one of the things that I'm most excited about, too, is the music. I mean, nobody has really said anything about the music as far as what I've read so far, so I'm excited to see the music and what it, ah, I just, yeah, what Junkie XL did with the score, just for the minimal amount that it was in Batman vs. Superman, I mean, already, I mean, that theme, they constantly use it in the trailers as well for Wonder Woman. So I'm really excited to hear as well um, how it incorporates in the movie, because being that everybody is just praising this movie so much, that means the score had to have played a significant role in its high score as well. Hopefully, we shall see. So we just got done watching Wonder Woman and I loved it. I enjoyed it so much that I'll probably go see it again this weekend. Yeah, it definitely is visually stunning among all the, you know, great things that they have done with the DCEU, but yeah. they took it 10 steps farther than I, what we've seen already. I love that this movie was like, Personal, but then at the same time you had like the big moments and the big like action sequences and I just love the innocence that Wonder Woman had yeah. and like uh, the way that she I, I think Gal Gadot did an amazing job. Now granted I was one of those people that when they first announced that she was gonna be a Wonder Woman I was like, oh the girl from Fast and the Furious? Like, <gasps> but you know what? She shut me up. That she did an amazing job, and I loved her. Now I can't think of anybody else who could be Gal Gadot. Really, especially like going through the evolution, going through the evolution of her character from where she was in Batman vs Superman, and then in this one, and then as a child, which you do see in the trailers that they have like the young versions of her. Like you just get her in different stages of her life, and like you said, it does make it far more personal with Wonder Woman. Um, you know, then we were able to get in Batman vs Superman because she was in it so minimally. So now we actually get to dive deep into the lore of Wonder Woman. Speaking of which, really happy that they are sticking with the whole gods among us mentality, um, with the mythology, Greek mythology, and hanging on to that. Yeah, like, I really enjoy that they kind of put that mythical Greek stuff into it as well as it being real life too mm -hmm. and i felt like they put it they fit they fit so well in this movie like it wasn't so out of place like oh this is this magical world and yeah. everything is all magical like it like put theirs in the same like as part of the real world real world and then they showed like every like it just yeah it felt connected yeah and that's the biggest thing between you know the superheroes in this you know universes and superheroes of other universes is you know this one is tied into the Greek mythological pastime and that's what kind of makes it just on a whole different level it's a whole different world of superheroes gods among men and women so I really like that they are embracing that fully um, I mean they even touched on that in Batman vs Superman a little bit like with right. with Lex Luthor, I mean that was kind of his thing. Was you was know the, he's like these beings aren't of this world. Correct. And that we need to look beyond yeah. ourselves and and just and weapons to take down the gods. You know that that's something that Lex Luthor was very much adamant about. So kind of continuing that, except you know getting into the whole 
uh, demigod scenario yes. is something that it, it was a lot of fun. The music. Oh, I love the music. Uh, I thought that the music was great, and they used her theme in such a way, too, in all of the bits and pieces. Yeah. And, like, granted, it wasn't um, who did her theme. Junkie but, XL, yeah, Tom it was, it wasn't him this time around. Mm. It was somebody else, but I thought that he brought her theme over very well and used it in, the, in moments that it needed to be there. Right. And I also thought that all of the other music was very intimate and that it flowed very well with all the other things that I definitely probably get the soundtrack. To. Yeah, soundtrack and that's the thing too, is uh, visually there were only a couple moments where the slow motion, we kind of chuckled oh a bit. Oh my God, at the okay. <laughs> that is probably one of the things like, maybe they did too much slow yeah. motion and like- There was over, one specific was moment, yeah, <laughs> where it was in slow-mo on Connie Nielsen, but um, you could tell it, it was like full CG force on her face and it looked really weird. But yeah, the rest and I saw of it, it cracking up. But yeah, <laughs> but the rest of it was just beautiful. Anytime they used to utilize it with Diana, it was perfect. So yeah. really enjoyed what they did visually. And I think that all of the other characters in there like Steve Trevor yeah and the other ones <laughs> that are with. I know one was named Saeed um, yeah. and then of course you have the, just the actors all together Danny Houston and and uh, David, David Thewlis and they just were so good in this movie just I loved it I love David Thewlis anyway yeah so. that's true <laughs> anything he's in never trust him he's a werewolf but anyways, I really enjoyed what they did in this movie, character-wise, actor-wise, it was a lot of fun. Patty Jenkins, he did an amazing job, and even like when we were watching behind the scenes, and behind the scenes, like the, the freaking, like Zack Snyder's name came up a lot, yeah. so. Well, I mean, he's kind of implanted the world to begin with, right. so they all have to build off of him, so he's got to get his name in there somewhere. I mean, he, I'm just saying like, sometimes it's not all bad. Yeah, uh, so score, what would you give it? I would give it a 4.5 out of 5. I'll give it a 4.75 out of 5. Okay, I'm giving it a higher score than you. Okay, so I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Okay, now I'll give it a 4. Actually, I would probably give it like a 4.9. And it could be because I'm really sick, so I was most of the time coughing, you know, trying to muffle my cough. So Okay, I, I take my 4.5 back. It, it's like a 4.9 for me. Okay, so for me it's still 4.75 out of 5. Okay. okay, so we are going to just stick with this non-spoiler review that you're watching. Now, yes. but if you want to check out our full spoiler review, we will be recording with Nerd Build um, yes. tomorrow, we will Saturday. Put the link on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. So yeah. Check out for there on there, um, and we're going to do a full spoiler with them. Yep. And thank you guys. You can check out some of the other videos that we did. Phoenix Comic Con was last weekend, hence the con crud. Um, and just be on the lookout for that full spoiler review from Nerd Build, starring us. So thank you guys, and as always. Now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye.